coming this fall. Come on a journey with a boy and his dog as he transforms from a life where food rules all. Hey, Ma! Huh? Where's the chocolates? The, yeah, the chocolates! The chocolate, The choc- Ma! Where fitting through the front door on any given day Hi, is a privilege, not a right. <laughs> Ah, get the oil. The oil, ma. The oil. I can't squeeze through the door. I need the oil. No, not foil. Oil. We're all donuts. Make him go nuts. Ma, ah. get my stretchy pants. Interpretive dance. Not interpretive dance. Stretchy pants. I'll get it. We're rollers, not push-ups. Are part of his daily routine. Oh, ma, call an ambulance. Not an ambient, it's the middle of the day. What do I want to sleep for? What do you need an ambient? An ambulance, ma. Are you sleeping? not BNs. I told you you need more sleep, Mike. I told you you're not sleeping early enough. Don't miss out on this epic movie containing an epic story with an epic boy who has an epic dog as they both eat epic food together epically. Well, believe it or not, that is a movie about me before I lost 70 to 75 pounds. Uh, coming out this fall, 2017, directed by, I always forget his name, Mel, eyes are getting bad, Mel Gibson, Mel Gibson. He's up and coming. Like I said, he begged me to do it, so I just, uh, I thought it couldn't hurt. If you know anything about me, you know that I always haven't been a skinny kid. I grew up a pretty fat kid. If you look at pictures at the beginning of my first grade year, I was skinny and healthy and normal, and by the end of it, I blew up like an atomic bomb. To give you an idea of what I would eat in a day, basically what I would do is I'd wake up, I'd make toaster strudels, and as you know, it comes with these icing packs, like six of them. All I would do is eat the icing, and then we'd have all these toaster strudels, and there's no icing to eat them with, and we'd just throw them out. I'd go to school, my mom would pack a lunch for me, like a sandwich, chips. I'd sell gum for like a dollar a piece, and I'd use that. I'd buy a cosmic brownie, a honey bun, donuts, fruit roll-ups, chocolate. I'd come home, I'd eat like two, three bowls of cereal, then my dad would get home from work and ask me if I ate dinner already and I'd say no and then we'd go get some like KFC and then at night I'd have more chocolate or peanut butter like a ton of peanut butter it was just a blur my doctor would ask me uh Michael what are your eating habits as if there were habits to my eating it was just horrible and my doctor would get so angry at me so angry at my parents basically like in an effort to try to like scare me into losing weight and it would work for like a day two days I'd eat healthy or whatever I didn't really even know what a calorie was but I'd try to eat healthy and then I'd just fall off the wagon again it was just this never-ending cycle of course, I was made fun of at times, but I also had this image where I was like the class clown. I was like, I was the fat, funny kid. And I'm sure deep down, it was not okay, but but I liked that. I liked being the fat and funny kid. I liked people thinking I was funny. In first grade, my first grade teacher, just to like get me to shut up during class, he gave me a half an hour uh, of class time called Mikey's Funny Time where I would just run the class. Like I was in front of the class. I'd call people up. I'd like riff, do all these skits with them. It was just amazing. It was perfect. So then fast forward to when I'm like 15 and I go to the doctor and the doctor recommends that I get blood tests. Again, he yells at me. His name's like Salvatore. He's a big Italian guy. And he's yelling about me being fat. And I'm trying to relate to him. I'm like, hey, like we're both Italian. We both like to eat. There's nothing wrong with that. By the way, I'm, I'm not Italian. I'm Egyptian. Nothing about me or my family is Italian, but I try to like relate to him. He wasn't buying it. And he sent me to get some blood tests. So me, I'm my buddy Kyle and my dad, early Saturday morning, we're walking in to get these uh, these blood tests and uh, this old woman, sake of the story, let's call her Doris, she comes in flying, she comes in hot, like real hot in this old van, burning rubber, and she crashes into a handicap sign pole. She crashed into the pole, just like as if it wasn't there. I run up to the car, first time I ran in months, and I'm like, hey, Doris, are you okay? And she's like, grandson grants i'm like no i'm not your grand what are you talking doris come on so obviously she was a little dazed and confused and we wanted to call an ambulance for her but she don't want us to call her an ambulance because she didn't have insurance anyway that's all besides the point so i get my blood work now we're in march we're in march of my freshman year of high school march 23rd i remember the day it was my sister's birthday there was this all you can eat pizza and wings place called palos if i had to envision what heaven would be like you die you get transported to this place and just waitresses beautiful waitresses surrounded by tvs with sports on them are bringing you pizza and wings endlessly. Do you want a side of ranch or do you want a side of barbecue? And I'd say, yes, I do, yes. And they bring it and it's just like, whatever you want for 15 bucks, they bring it to you. And basically me going there was a big F you to the doctor, Salvatore, my doctor. And I'm not gonna lie, it felt good. 
it, it felt good to give him the big middle finger because I enjoyed being that overweight kid. I enjoyed being funny. I loved food. And to me, trading food for like looking better wasn't worth it. I'm with my sister and like a bunch of her friends. We have this big table. You know, we all get one plate of pizza, one plate of wings, and then a couple girls get more, and then a couple people get another plate. I just like keep going. Like I'm just like pounding through them. Like the moment the waitress brings my, I order another piece. I order more wings, I order more sides of sauces, and uh, there's just no end in sight. Like, I'm, see I'm seeing red at this point. And then we finish up, and I'm walking out of the palace place, and there's people lined up on both sides. I'm, like, running through the cr this crowd of people, like, I win all these awards for most pizza eaten and largest stretchy pants worn. And uh, my dad is standing standing at the, the counter, and he, he got the mail. He opens a letter, and it has my blood tests, and my dad's reading the blood test, and my dad is like in the medical field, so he knows what all this means. And uh, basically, long story short, I was this close to, uh, to getting diabetes. Nowadays, diabetes is like more mainstream, for lack of a better term, but when it's like real, in your life, it's uh, it's a little bit scary because not of the diabetes itself, but of what that means. Like it means that you're you can't eat certain foods. Like it's it's a it's a lifestyle change. In a lot of cases, there's no going back. Like that's the way it is for the rest of your life. So at this point, like the wheels are starting to turn a little bit. I'm starting to change my thinking, and uh, and my dad takes me out onto that deck, and he sits me down, and he's like like Mikey. Um, Thank you.